Hello YouTube viewers, hope everyone is doing well. In this video, you will learn how do you test that your ASP.NET Core Minimal API behaves as expected. Do you need to deploy your application? Can you write tests with frameworks like XUnit, NUnit or MS Test? In this video, you'll start with writing a simple status controller which will return APIs up and running and then we'll write a basic unit test against that controller to make sure that it is returning the API is up and running or it is behaving as expected. What is required? An OS that supports .NET, like for example, Windows, Mac, Linux, a .NET IDE, for example, VS Code with C Sharp plugin or Visual Studio, .NET 6.0 SDK or later. To get started, you will need to create a solution with two projects. An ASP.NET Core Minimal API that will contain the application and a unit test project that will contain the tests. In this video, you will use XUnit as a testing framework. You can create this solution in your favorite .NET IDE. Either you can use Visual Studio 2022 or you, you can use .NET command line interface. I already have Visual Studio 2022 open and that's what I will be using. Double click on create new project and select ASP.NET Core Web API and click on next. Give it a meaningful name, minimal API. You can leave the location default and the solution name as minimal API as well. Click on next. Uncheck configure for HTTPS and uncheck enable open API support. Make sure .NET 6 is selected and authentication type is none and click on create. Depending on your system's performance, it might take a little bit longer uh, to create the project. So give it a few minutes. As you can see, Visual Studio is creating a skeleton project. It takes a few, few minutes depending on system performance. It might be faster on your system. I'm using a virtual machine uh, on a Mac computer, so it's a little bit slow here. So we don't need this, uh, so we can uh, close this. And as you can see, the, we have a minimal API. What we'll do is we'll add another project here. Right click on the solution, go to add, click new project. And in the search for templates, type XUnit. I have already searched for it, but that's why you're seeing it. So select XUnit test project, click on next. Give a meaningful name, minimal API tests. And you can leave the location default and click on next. Make sure .NET 6.0 is selected. Click on create. Again, give it a few minutes. It might take a little bit longer on your machine or much faster on your machine. As you can see, this is this time it took a little bit uh, less time than before. And uh, by default, the unit, Visual Studio creates uh, unit test one dot CS file. We don't need that. Let's get rid of that. And uh, in the minimal API, I will do some cleanup and uh, write some code there as well. So let's, we don't need this weather forecast here. So let's get rid of that. Click on OK. And the controllers folder, there is a weather forecast controller. Double click on it and we'll refactor it to status controller. Click on rename and make sure the name is status controller and press enter. Visual Studio will prompt you to if you would like to rename the classes as well or the code elements. So click on yes. What Visual Studio will do is uh, it will go and rename the weather forecast controller to uh, status controller uh, and its references as well. So as you can see, it has already named it. Uh, get rid of this existing code. When we don't need this, we'll write our own code. So now what we'll do is we'll add up uh, add a HTTP GET method. So let's write HTTP GET method and name equals status and it will be a public method public it will return a string status and it will only return API is up and running. 
let's resolve this issue http get and name equals status and make sure we have the semicolon at the end and now our status controller is is uh, basic status con controller is ready so right click on the solution and click on build to make sure that everything compiles okay okay it might be faster or slower depending on your system so what it will do is it will build uh, both the minimal api solution uh, project as well as the api minimal api test project if you haven't built it before it's the first time it's going to take a little bit longer as you can see the build is succeeded uh, it has built two projects and none has failed so that means our code is uh, error free and it's ready for testing so before we can make any change or write any code for testing we need to make a small change in uh, program.cs file we need to make sure that our program.cs class or program class is public so we have to add public partial class program so the reason why you need this partial class definition is that by default program.cs file is compiled into a private class program which cannot be accessed by other projects by adding this public partial class the test project will get access to the program class and you can write test against it so let's save this close this and now in the minimal api test project we have to make sure uh, that a couple of packages and references are installed so expand minimal api test project and then expand packages and right click on packages and select manage nuget packages and find microsoft.asp.core.mvc.testing package uh, in the browser section and select that click on install click on ok click on i accept and once the package is installed right click on dependencies add project after click on add project references and select minimal api and click ok so make this make sure that uh, the minimal api project is referenced in the uh, minimal api test project and click on save now we have to add a test class into uh, the minimal api test project so right click on the project minimal api test click on add click on class and add a new class minimal api tests let's get rid of all the unnecessary usings we don't need all those click uh, we only need the using microsoft dot asp.net core dot mvc or testing that's the only new space we need to include and we need to change the scoping of this class to public and we need to add a test method which is of type fact we public async and we'll be returning a task test status endpoint So the reason we added the reference to microsoft.asp.net core.mvc.testing package is that it contains a package called web application factory which is an important building block for testing asp.net core applications the web application factory class creates an in-memory application that you can test it handles bootstrapping for of your application and provides an http client that you can use to make requests so we'll write some code in the to our test method so await using for written application object of type web application 
factory of type program and this program uh, class is coming from our minimal API test and using now we'll create a instance of HTTP client client both application or create client and we'll get a response we'll store the response back into this variable we'll so wait client dot get string async and we'll assert equals assert dot equals The string we are checking against is that API is up and running because this is the API, this is the response that we are getting back from our controller status controller. As you can see, this is the string, so we need to check against the string. So either we can copy it or we can type it there. So I may have accidentally typed uh, uh, an exclamation at the end and we gotta compare against the response david So you can run the test and see the results. So you can right click. We have to build the project again. So to give it a few seconds or maybe a couple of minutes. As you can see, all the builds are successful. Zero has failed, so we can go into Test Explorer and we can say we can uh, look at the Test Explorer, and we can close this window here to get more room. And then we can say click. On, we can click on Run to to run all the tests. So this will run all the tests. We only have one test to run, so it's going to run the test and then compare the results from the response back uh, from our status controller, which is API is up and running. And now it's running all the tests, which is only one. It seems like our test has failed. So we have probably made a mistake here. It should be not, should be our status endpoint, not the root, because that's where the our status controller is. So let's run the test again. Give it a few seconds. 
So as you can see, our test has passed. That was because we were trying to call a root endpoint and there was nothing at that root endpoint, so it was not finding our status endpoint. So that's it. You just build a simple minimal API and run a simple test to check whether that controller and the endpoint is working properly or not. That's all for this video. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below. Click that like button. Likes are always appreciated. Please subscribe to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in next video.